It's Monday, the 18th of July, 2022. Welcome to The Fast Five by Fear and Greed, where we give you the top five business stories you need to know in just five minutes. I'm Michael Thompson, and good morning, Sean Aylmer. Good morning, Michael. Sean, five stories to get through in five minutes. Let's jump into it. Story number one. ANZ is working with Brisbane-based Suncorp to buy the Queensland Group's banking business for around $4.9 billion. Yes, last week they were looking at software group MYOB, but that's been put on hold as it tries to pick off a much larger asset, Suncorp's bank. According to media reports, negotiations were ongoing over the weekend. A deal is expected to be announced today. Now, ANZ will have to raise about $3.5 billion from shareholders to pay for that. If the deal goes ahead, it would be the biggest banking acquisition since Commonwealth Bank bought Bank West and Westpac bought St. George. Both of those were back in 2008. For ANZ, it adds a substantial retail network to its operations, including about $60 billion of customer loans, mostly their mortgages, and that's good for ANZ because it's lagging in that area. For Suncorp, it would end its bank assurance model and leave it as the country's second largest insurer behind EAG. Now, a deal, Michael, would end the whole bank assurance era where financial service companies took on banking and insurance and wealth management. CEOs loved it, didn't work. All those strategies are now being unwound. Okay, Sean, on to story number two now, and one that really does affect an awful lot of us. Just three superannuation funds made money in their popular balanced option last year, demonstrating really what a disaster of a year it's been for investing. That's right. Research House Super Ratings has released the top performing funds with exposure to growth assets. That means between 60 and 76% of funds are exposed to growth assets, things like equities. Now, most super funds fit into that category. The top performer last financial year was Host Plus, which returned 1.6%. Qantas Super and Christian Super also were positive. Everyone else was negative. The average return was minus 3.1%. So if your fund did more than that, good on you. If it did less than 3.1%, it underperformed. Now, of course, superannuation is a long-term product. We do care about one year if you're about to take your money out. If you're not, think about it as a 10-year option. On 10 years, Host Plus again comes out on top for its balanced option, returning 9.7% per annum. Pretty good. Next was the country's biggest super fund, Australian Super, which returned 9.3%. Okay, story number three, Sean, the federal and state governments are bracing for a surge in COVID cases and the warnings are becoming increasingly dire. That's right. Of course, on Saturday morning, the National Cabinet held an urgent meeting. It couldn't wait for the meeting today and agreed to reinstate the $750 pandemic leave payment for workers without access to sick leave. It will last until September this year, cost about $800 million. Now, Chief Medical Officer Paul Kelly has warned that the current COVID wave won't peak until next month. And the current variant has similar infection rates to measles. That's extremely infectious. Yeah, it certainly is. Story four, Sean, an international one for us. How about this? Porsche, a division of Volkswagen, is set to list on its own. But the thing is, not everyone thinks it's actually a good investment. Yeah, Porsche has been out telling potential investors that buying shares in it is like getting the best from Louis Vuitton and Ferrari, according to a report in Bloomberg. Not sure about that. Porsche reckons it generates healthy profits and significant sales volumes. It sells about 300,000 cars a year and is pushing hard into electric vehicles. It's likely to become a major player in that market. But investors aren't so sure. Markets are volatile at the moment. Selling luxury goods when you're heading towards a recession, hmm, ain't always popular. Now, the IPO, the initial public offer, is expected to be launched in September. Porsche, the company, is expected to be value at around 80 billion euros. Okay, final one, Sean. Story number five. It is all about a major crisis unfolding in the food world. France has run out of Dijon mustard. Yes, the home of gastronomy is running out of one of its prized ingredients, Dijon mustard. There are a few things going on. There's been bad weather in Burgundy, home of the brown mustard species used in Dijon. Another big producer, Canada, has been hit by a heat wave, cutting its exports, according to Financial Times. Then there was the invasion of Ukraine. Who knew? But Ukraine was another big brown mustard species producer. Wholesale prices of the seeds have risen by up to 300%. On top of that, all sorts of shipping and transport problems. French stores have literally run out of stock a crisis in the food world. No Dijon mustard. That is very worrying, Sean. There we go, the top five business stories in five minutes. Thank you, Sean. 
Thank you, Michael. It's Monday, the 18th of July, 2022. Remember to hit follow on the podcast. And if five minutes isn't enough, then you can find our longer daily show called Fear and Greed wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm Michael Thompson, and that was The Fast Five by Fear and Greed. Have a great day. Listener.